Oh yeah, it's double. Double organic. Hey there, thanks for tuning in for another dose of vitamin D with me, Double Organic. I recently made a video uh, talking about how fat you should be. What, what should your body fat percentage be uh, for a healthy individual? And now I'm going to be ranking the five different ways that we can measure our body fat percentage. And I'm not going to lie, the video is going to be a little bit long and I'm going to drop a little bit of science on you, but we won't get too crazy and I'll balance all the, the science out with my, uh, my bad jokes and uh, yeah, that's why you come every week anyways, right? My jokes. Now, before we get into it, I need to go over some of the uh, principles of, of measuring body fat percentage uh, so that as we go through the, the listings and explain them a little bit, it makes more sense. So we can basically break up uh, our, co our components of our body into different amounts of components. Uh, and there's these different models. So you have the, like a two component model, three component, four component, and the more components, uh, sometimes called compartments, uh, that there are, the more accurate it is. For example, in the most commonly used uh, Brozek or Siri model, it's a two component model which looks at your non-fat mass, which is essentially everything that is in fat, and then your fat mass. So your fat and your fat free mass. So you'd be looking at fat and everything else like bone, muscle, etc, 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 everything else. which doesn't really let you uh, know what's going on with the other masses, you know, how much bone, how much muscle, it's just all lumped into one category. So the more categories you have, the more you know about each component that makes up your body. And we're going to find out that a lot of the ways that we measure our body fat is a two component model, so it's not as accurate. For example, and for comparison, the chemical model looks at fat, protein, carbohydrate, water, and minerals, and uh, how much of each of those components makes up your body for, for that total. Of course, what people mostly care about is the fat. That's the com component they care about. And uh, in some cases, mineral, such as you know bone. How much bone density do you have? very important for people with osteoporosis. It is, however, not very easy to measure beyond two components with the tools that we'll be using, and you'll see why. And the only real way to, to know how much fat is in your body is to kind of open you up, take you apart, kill you, and, and put every component on, on a scale and really weigh you, but, but then you'd be dead and you probably don't want that. And when I say measure, I really mean predict, because we're not really measuring body fat in many cases, it's predicting, it's making assumptions. For example, in the two component model, it's assumed that fat has a density of 0.9 grams per centimeters cubed, and uh, bone has a density of 1.1 grams per, uh, per centimeters cubed, but different genders, different different ethnicities, different, all sorts of different people are going to have varying uh, densities and for example bone density of the legs is much higher than the bone density of the arm because the legs are weight bearing so they're going to have almost double the bone density of the arm but here we're just taking an average bone density and using that to, to, to determine someone's fat and if you ask my sister she'd tell you that I am very dense No. And so the measurement can only be as accurate as the assumptions that we're, we're having. And you're going to see that every single one of these uh, fat measurement or, or body composition measurement uh, methods makes lots of assumptions. They have to. And I have a saying that I've come up with, and it's that whenever you make an assumption, there's a good chance you're going to make an ass of yourself. So don't don't assume things. Just like that one time I went out on a date with a girl and I assumed we'd split the bill. She, she didn't agree with my assumptions. And so now that we've covered that, let's get into the numbers here. Number five is something you might even have in your home or in your gym. Hopefully you go to a gym. 
It's called bioelectric impedance or BIA. And this is when a low current travels through your body. Bzz, the current travels faster or what's called facilitated when you have fat free hydrated tissue. And by the way, we'll find out that your level of hydration can change the accuracy of this measurement by five to seven percent. It's kind of a big deal. And the current travels slower or impeded in fat tissue. And this impedance uh, reading that, that, the, that is given by the machine is converted into a fat percentage. And it's all based on formulas, calculations, and assumptions. And we don't need to get into that because it's not, it's not important for, for what this video is about. But okay, that seems fine. What's the big deal with, with this? You know, a current goes through, you calculate, formula, math, dee -dee 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 -dee, pops out a number. Seems all right. Well, there's two issues. And, and the, the one is that it assumes that you're a rectangle. Are you a rectangle? The other issue is that the electricity wants to travel in the quickest, most direct path. So if, it, if you're standing on those metal uh, plates barefoot, it's going to go up one foot and down the other leg. Or, or go up one leg and down the other leg. It's not really paying attention to, uh, you know, this area up here. You're not a rectangle. By the way, it was a, it was a rhetorical question. Yeah. Now there are more accurate uh, bioelectric impedances. Is that, does that work? Anyway, there are more accurate uh, versions of, of this piece of equipment. You can get really cheap ones, you can get better ones. You can get ones where you step on uh, on the plates and put your hands on, on, uh, on the electrodes. And then it erases your fingerprints. No, it doesn't do that. Uh, and that way it's going through the arms and the leg. Gets most of the body. Oh, look how happy she is getting her fat analyzed. Number four, pinch me because you'd have to be dreaming for this to be accurate. This one's full of assumptions. Assumptions that are once again not true. Yeah. And this, this method requires a lot of skill. The way this works is that with a measurement device, you pinch the skin in certain areas and knowing roughly the thickness of the skin, when you're pinching the skin and the fat, so you're kind of getting a double layer of the fat and the skin, right? It can roughly estimate the fat and with lots of formulas, figure out how fat you are. When measuring, there's two types of compressions. You've got dynamic or initial compression where, where the, the caliber pinches and kind of compresses a lot. And then there's static compression where uh, over time, it, compresses just a little bit more. Kind of like when you're standing on memory foam. You stand on it and it goes, you know, sinks down. And then over time it just kind of sinks down a little bit more. And so you take the measurement after three seconds uh, when it's fully compressed. And there's several measurement points on the body. Triceps, chest, uh, front of the leg, you know, belly, a bun bunch of different areas. Not the nipple, you don't pinch it down. It would hurt. Don't do that. And that's all well and good, but hold on a second. Each part of the body, the fat compresses differently. So you might get a lot of compression here, but not much compression down there. And the skin thickness varies throughout the body. And so now you got a, you got a couple confounding errors here. So we need something new, something hip, something cool, something futuristic. This next one looks like an alien escape pod. It's called Bod Pod. Or, more accurately, Air Displacement Plethysmography. Said no one ever. So you get in this chamber, it's, it becomes slightly pressurized, and they're able to figure out how much uh, your volume is based on knowing how much volume is in the chamber and then when, when, when you are in the chamber suddenly 
uh, it kind of displaces the air, right? Air displacement plus the thermography, whatever. Displacement. And then what about the air in your lungs? That gets estimated uh, and in more accurate uh, methods such as in research you can uh, you know blow into uh, a device and figure out what is your uh, lung volume to be more accurate which we tend to want to do in research this however suffers from the uh, the assumptions in the Brozek or Siri two component models where you know you've got the 0.9 uh, grams per centimeter cubed for fat and for bone it was 1.1 uh, grams per centimeter cubed. And remember, those for, for people are not set numbers. This graph is going to explain much better uh, some of the issues with the uh, bod pod. So in this graph, two component uh, bod pod is compared to a four component uh, model that I'll talk about at the very end. It's super sciencey. For the end. And in one example, a person gained 10% fat, but Bod Pod only measured a 1% gain in fat. In another example, someone lost 5% fat, but Bod Pod said they lost 11% fat. They were probably feeling pretty good about themselves. Yeah. We can see the issues with Bod Pod. It's not the only one that has issues, as you as you can see. A lot of these have issues. Number two, slightly more accurate than Bod Pod, slightly less futuristic. It is based on the same principles as Bod Pod, or more accurately, Bod Pod is based on the principles of this one, hydrostatic weighing. This one requires you to get, to get wet. You gotta get your, in your swim trunks. And, uh, yeah, it's got, some, it's got some issues too. We're gonna go over that. You, you remember good old Archimedes? When he got in the bathtub and it overflowed and he said, Eureka! I think he said Eureka. Yeah, I don't know. He said something. It was Greek people. And he figured something kind of amazing out. I've never really had a Eureka moment in the bathtub. Although one time I did get in the bathtub, but I still had my socks on. That felt kind of weird. Ew, my socks, they're all wet. So I know this video is long enough. It's probably just my... My good jokes and my pretty face that's keeping you uh, entertained. But we'll press on. We're almost done. I promise. It'll be great. I got a cool joke coming up, probably. Maybe. I don't know. You might like it. And so for the sake of time, yeah, I'm not going to go into all the formulas. Uh, for all this, this density calculation, it gets kind of crazy. Let's just say, let's just say that. Crazy. But essentially, uh, Archimedes' principle is based on the fact that the loss of mass that an object or that you have in water is equal to the amount of water displaced. So when you're in water, you weigh less. So picture this, you're in a dunk tank, this big tank of water, and you're, you're on what looks like a swing, but it's really a scale. Remember, this is hydrostatic weighing. They're weighing you. They're measuring your weight in water and so it's kind of like a giant um, scale that you'd see in the grocery store that you'd measure your, your fruit on or veggies on that you're buying. You do buy fruits and vegetables don't you? And so you, you need to be underwater on the scale, not moving, don't move god damn it, and they're gonna weigh you. Oh by the way, yeah, that and your lungs, that's affecting your weight and making you seem fatter than you are. So you, could you, could you uh, exhale everything? You're still underwater for 10 seconds. So you have to exhale everything. <sighs> Every last bit of air. There'd be no bubbles. Gotta be empty completely. And then once it's empty, try and get a bit more out. Yeah, it can be fun, fun times. And through the power of math, you get a number. We're gonna look at a graph again that shows us 
how accurate this can be. It is, on average, more accurate than bot and pot. Although these are gonna be some examples that show that it's not that accurate. So once again, we've got a graph with our two component uh, hydrostatic wing versus what of the four component model tells us. In one example, a person showed a 10% loss in fat. What did hydrostatic wang show? 0%. So they, they worked so hard, they lost 10% fat, but if they did hydrostatic wang, it tells them they lost nothing. That's what person number one did. Their friend, person number two, let's see how they fared. Person number two also lost 10% fat. What did hydrostatic wang say? It said that they lost 20% fat. So, person one, person two, best friends since childhood. They wanted to lose weight together. They both lost the same amount of weight, but they, they did hydrostatic weighing. And person one, they said they lost nothing, you lazy bugger. <laughs> and person number two lost 20%. Now, they hate each other. Hydrostatic Wang broke up his friendship. <laughs> it could happen. It's probably happened. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Alright, we made it to the end. Number one. I hope I'm not the only one here still. I hope you're hanging on there. I hope my crying didn't turn you away. Not a cry, baby. Number one is DEXA. You may have heard of it. DEXA, Dual X-Ray Absorptiometry. Who comes up with these names? I'll stick with the acronym. And it is the new gold standard. Hydrostatic Wang used to be the gold standard. The best. We just saw some examples where it wasn't that great, was it? But the new gold standard is uh, DEXA. It's got some issues too. I think it's based a little bit on, on some assumptions uh, as well, but yeah, it is more accurate. I'm explain how. I'm explain how. Although I'm no radiologist, but basically this is how it works. An X-ray shoots X-ray beams, but of two types, and the one type of beam. Maybe it's like a different frequency or, or, or something like that. It is absorbed more by fat free mass than you've got the other beam that is absorbed more by fat mass. And you can, you can kind of like compare these numbers sort of and figure out just exactly how much fat uh, there is. Again, I'm not an expert with DEX. It requires, you know, a lot of training to, to, to use, and I've, I've only just learned some of the fluff about it. So apparently it's pretty accurate. It's a three-component model, so it's got to be better than the two-component model, right? And but there's there's some downsides to this. X-rays, you know, they're they're kind of toxic. To humans, it's gonna kill you. Well, you know, slowly. So it's not good. It's not something you want to be doing every single day. But to be super accurate, it's what you'd be doing. And like I said, it's a three-component model: fat, muscle, and bone. And but wait, before we're done, remember that four-component model I was talking about? It's the new up-and-comer, super sciency. You know. Really expensive, not, not the average person is going to be able to do this. In fact, only in, in, a, in, a, in a research setting would you be able to, to do this one. And I don't even know if there's really a name for this. Uh, that's how new it is, yeah. It combines either bod pod or hydrostatic wing to figure out the body density, DEXA to find the bone density, and then to find your uh, your total body water, you know, how, how hydrated you are, it uses something called deuterium dilution. And what is deuterium? I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's, it's a, a stable isotope of hydrogen. It's a heavy hydrogen. 
And so hydrogen, it's heavier. And so if that heavy hydrogen is in, in, in heavy water, now you've got like this chubby water or something. And somehow these, with science, you can figure out how much water uh, a person has in them, how hydrated they are. When you're born, you're 100% water. Right now, I'm about 70% water. Uh, and, and an older individual, they could be like 50% water. So that's, that can change. And so that's why it's important to be accurate, to know what's your water percentage at. And this one is, is the most accurate, but it's, you're, you're com you need to do the hydrostatic weighing DEXA and this deterrent dilution, whatever that is. To, to find out how fat you are. And to finish up, there, there's pros and cons to all of this. I rank these on accuracy. Obviously a con of DEXA is, is the radiation. That's not good. Uh, the chart goes over things like the cost, the skill required, the accuracy, uh, to a degree. Um, it, do, it, it doesn't break down the accuracy uh, very well, I don't think. Anyways. Uh, it's a it's useful breakdown and I hope this video was useful in some way shape or form or informative or interesting anyways I'm gonna leave you there remember get the six aspects of health every single day earth air fire water work rest subscribe let's walk the path of health together whoa look at all those recipes those look tasty give me some of that Oh yeah, it's double organic. I offer something I call double organic coaching. I even offer it free to one person each month. Got lots of epic recipes and information on health and wellness to share with you. Connect on Facebook, Instagram, and of course YouTube.